Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode we're going to be talking about the UK state pension. Now making sure we have enough funds to finance our retirement is quite an important part that needs our attention when we are considering what happens to our financial future. Now I've spoken about workplace pensions in a previous episode and today we're going to be looking at another method which of course is the UK state pension. The latest version of the state pension came into force on the 6th of April 2016. Now if your retirement date is falling on that date or after that date your pension will be based on this new scheme and the reason for this change was the UK government was trying to simplify what was considered to be a really complicated pension process. Whether they actually achieve this through this new system is debatable but let's go through all the key points that we need to know from how to be eligible for the state pension, how much money we can expect to get from it and then towards the end of this video I'm going to be touching on a repeating concern about whether or not the state pension will be around for much longer. Mm. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness helping you be better with your money. Firstly, let's look at how to be eligible for the state pension. Now, the criteria for this is actually twofold. The first one being your age, and the second being your national insurance contributions. Now, the age at which you get the state pension really depends on when you were born. Now, this is different for men and women. For men, if you were born before the 6th of December, 1953, your state pension age is 65. If you were born on or after that date, your pension age is 66. For women, as I mentioned, it's going to be slightly Slightly different. If you were born before the 6th of April 1950, your state pension age is 60. If you were born on or after that date, it is now 66. Now the argument for the increase in state pension age is quite simple. We are just simply living longer as a human species and thus the pension model which did work during a time when only a handful of the population reached pension age and used it for only a small period of time. Now that has massively changed and now it is the vast majority of us that is able to reach the state pension age and we're claiming it for longer too because life expectancy has been growing over the same period. This means funding for the state pension is getting more and more expensive as time goes on and thus in order for the government to protect the pension they do have to introduce some reforms and one of those reforms is the steady increase of the pension age as time goes on. This is why increases to the pension age have already been proposed in the next couple of decades. In 2029 it's expected to go to 67 and in 2040 it's going up to 68. Moving on to the second criteria which is your national insurance contributions. Under the new rules you need to have paid 10 years of national insurance contributions to get any form of state pension. Now the more years that you contribute to national insurance does mean that you get more money from the state. To get the maximum amount from the state pension you do need to have contributed at least 35 years to national insurance. For most of us we pay national insurance automatically through our employer or if you are self-employed this will be done through self-assessment. Now you do have to earn above a certain threshold for your national insurance contributions to count. This is what is typically known as the qualifying years. For employees you do need to take home £120 per week. For those that are self-employed it is £125 per week. However if you are not working you can still claim national insurance credit if you are raising a family, if you are caring for someone who is sick or disabled, if you are on job seekers allowance or if you are in full-time training. Now you can actually check your current national insurance history by going onto the government gateway website. I'll put a link in the description box down below. Now you do have to provide some identification to sign up to the website, um, which I actually did find a bit tricky. For whatever reason, they didn't accept my pay slips. Um, so I did have to share with them my P60, which um, did work out fine in the end. But once you do get on it, it gives you a really good breakdown of how many qualifying years you've done so far. And if you want to make additional contributions, you're welcome to do so as well. Now the next point is to understand how much money we can get from the state pension. Now this all depends on how many qualifying years you have in your national insurance contributions. As I mentioned earlier the more you contribute to national insurance the more money you can get from the state. So to understand this better I'm going to run through some really basic maths so you can understand how this has worked out. So the formula that we need to understand how much we will take home from state pension is that we need to take the maximum amount that we can get from state pension which is currently £175.20 per week week divide it by the number of years required to get that maximum which is currently 35 years 
and times it by how much you've actually contributed to national insurance. So if I had 10 qualifying years of national insurance, which remember is the absolute minimum to get anything, this is worked out by 175 pounds and 20 pence divided by 35 times 10. And this works out to be just over 50 pounds. We can use the formula again if someone had 20 qualifying years. Again, you would just simply swap that 10 out with the 20 and this would give you 100 pounds per week from the state. Please do note that the maximum amount from the pension is subject to change. These are adjusted every year to account for inflation. Now you can actually increase the amount that you get from the state pension and this can be done from either of the following two ways. The first one being is that you can actually delay your state pension withdrawals. So once you hit the required retirement age, you don't actually have to take out the money straight away. You can contact HMRC and let them know that you would like to delay your state pension. For every nine weeks that you delay, your pension increases by 1%. So let's take the example where I've already done 35 qualifying years of national insurance contributions, which means I can get the maximum from the state, which is 175 pounds and 20, but I decide to delay my pension for another year, which sees my pension increase by 5.8%, which sees my pension increase to 185 pounds and 40 pence per week, which is 10 pounds and 20 pence more than if I didn't delay it for one year. Now, the other way to get more money from the state pension is to make additional contributions to your national insurance. Now, if you use the website that I mentioned earlier, the government gateway website, you can actually see your national insurance history. Now, you may actually realize that you're not actually eligible for the full state pension. And this is because you wouldn't have done 35 qualifying national insurance contributions to meet that requirement. Now what you can do if you do have some extra cash lying around is that you can decide to make voluntary contributions to your national insurance and that way you can bump up the amount of qualifying years that you have and thus get more money from the state. Please note, however, that when it comes to these voluntary contributions, you can only pay for gaps that have only been made within the last six years. So do take that into account. So those are the basic ins and outs when it comes to the state pension. However, there is an additional point that we do need to consider because this is a potential reality. Now, the state pension is actually almost 102 years old. It was actually introduced way back in January of 1909. However, there was a slightly alarming report made a few years ago from the government's own actuary department, and this is a team responsible for providing statistical and scientific methods to assess risk. And what they found is that without major government support, the state pension pot is actually going to run out by the year 2033, which is 13 years from now. So really alarming. And this is simply due to the fact that there is far less money coming into the state pension than we are giving out. The money for state pensions is predominantly funded by national insurance contributions. The ratio between those that are contributing to national insurance versus those that are withdrawing the money for state pension is at an unsustainable rate and unfortunately the outlook for the future the evidence suggests it's not going to get any better and this is why I've said in my previous videos we really shouldn't be relying on the state pension when it comes to funding for our retirement because we cannot guarantee in what shape or form it is going to be left like in a couple of years we really need to be looking at other ways to do this because not only is the state pension not guaranteed to be around for much longer but even if it did stand the test of time 175 pounds per week won't be enough for most families or individuals so we will either have to compensate by massively reducing our lifestyle or you just simply have to work for longer to make ends meet. So in either scenario, whether the state pension lives or dies, we really do need to take some responsibility and make sure that we have another way of funding our retirement. Some great methods to do this is that you can contribute to your workplace pension or your private pension where you currently get tax relief every time you contribute or you can open up a stocks and shares ISA or a lifetime ISA and these are really good tax efficient tools for investing in the long term. I've done videos on these in the past and I'll put a link in the description box for all of these videos if you want to learn how to better secure your financial future. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on the state pension and if you have set up other ways to fund for your financial future. And as always, if you really found this video useful, please do hit that subscribe button. That does wonders for the growth of my channel. And I release a video every single Monday. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.